When you open your mouth to speak, whether you like it or not, and I don't like it, but whether you like it or not, people are making value judgments about you. And they certainly don't know you. So all they really have to make these horrible value judgments about you is first and foremost the sounds that are coming out of your mouth. And they're listening to those sounds, and they don't take a long time to decide things. As smart as we think we are, we make rash value judgments in seconds as to whether or not that is somebody that I like, I could like, I don't like, somebody who's intelligent, somebody who is clearly not intelligent, somebody who's funny, not funny. But knowing that that is human nature and I am not going to change it and neither are you. But there is something we can change and we do have the power to do that. And that is we must find a way within those few seconds to alter people's perceptions or to offer in those first few seconds, in that first meeting, in that first however long that time is, we have to find a way of controlling other people's perceptions about us. It's everything you are plus everything you choose, and that's where voice comes in handy. If I've already explained that when you open your mouth, people are going to perceive you a certain way based on the sounds that come out, we have to decide the sounds that are going to come out based on the way we want to per be perceived. Because the whole concept of presence and being in the moment is being able to, and controlling the audience's perceptions is negated the second the audience thinks they already know what you're going to sound like and what you're going to say. There's no interest anymore. If you know what I'm going to say, I shouldn't bother to say it, and you, don't, you shouldn't bother to listen to it. What fun is that? You know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm going to say. I've lost my audience. The greatest gift that I can give you to understand how to captivate an audience vocally is to be changing, ever-changing, to be surprising that there's three octaves of range. We can go low, we can go high, we can go in the middle. And then speakers say to me, well, what the heck? Why do I care about middle voice? I'm not going to sing three octaves of range. What's that to me? And I say, it's everything. It's still a game changer because I train my speakers how to have chest, middle, and head, how to make them all thick and strong, how to connect the voices all together so that then you have an absolute huge range to go from lows and have all the thick, edgy, bassy, powerful, vibrant stuff in the chest voice, and have all of the beautiful, sweet, overtone, lovely, sweet, romantic, I said sweet again, pretty head voice stuff that is also sweet. And then the, the middle, which is buzzy and edgy and cuts right through all the baloney. And sometimes you need to have middle, and sometimes you need to have the head voice, and sometimes you need to have the chest voice. And you need them all if you're going to have a healthy voice. Because there's no way to have a healthy voice unless you have all three voices. Because if you only have chest voice, whenever you're speaking or singing, the body feels that there is a ceiling. And that ceiling isn't as high as you think. So as you start to speak and you start to go a little higher, you're aware of that ceiling and there's pressure and there's straining and the body goes back the other way. So you're never going to have that beautiful sing-song equality that I so want each and every one of you to have. Great speakers sound like great singers. Has anyone ever heard of Martin Luther King? <laughs> is that speech that he delivered, is he singing or is he speaking? Because I have trouble yes. distinguishing. Look, that sounds like singing to me, but it's called speaking. That's exactly the way that I want all of you to learn to speak. That you are speaking a song. That your speaking has to become everyone else's favorite song to listen to.